however, was alone. I didn't ask Naomi or Suzu to help because I'm a goddamn idiot at this point and I should have had Suzu and Naomi, but no, I didn't have them with me because I was too goddamn stupid. And I honestly didn't want them to. God damn you. I need to be alone before my wedding, so I got dressed and made myself into the perfect bride all my own in my own mansion. I stared at myself seeing exactly what I wanted to see in the reflection. I looked exactly where I wanted to look on my wedding day. I smiled and able to shake the feeling of happiness from my body. I'm getting married! I had a small sigh as relief washed over my nerve, nervous mind. Everything was going to be fine. As I heard a car honking outside, I felt nervous that I was creeping once again. I shook my head. I needed to relax. I grabbed the things I needed and rushed out, entering a white limousine. It was set to bring me to the venue, but I stopped the driver before he began to drive off. Can we stop somewhere first? You should never stop there, but whatever, we'll go with it. The driver agreed, and I guided him towards the cemetery my grandfather was buried at. Hmm. It's been two years since he passed away. My personal visits to his grave have become fewer at times and went on, but I never stopped going. Today, though, was an incredibly happy day. I was full of emotion and I couldn't help but visit his gravestone. After all, I was about to marry a demon. I was about to marry the man of my dreams. I wanted to stop there before going to the wedding bed talk to my grandfather. I'm pretty sure I looked odd in the cemetery wearing a, a wedding dress. This, of course, here is just the conclusion of the code that you had, the demon war one. That's what this is. However, I didn't mind. I need to come regardless. I stopped by the grave. Staring down at it with a smile. I'm getting married today, Grandpa. The wind gently danced around me as if Grandfather issued it to reply. My smile grew brighter and I let her to sigh. <sighs> I couldn't lie. I wanted my grandfather to be at my wedding. But I couldn't go back in time, even if I was able to. How could I stop him from dying? I shook my head. I didn't want to think about it. Not on the day of my wedding. I hope you'll be there in spirit, Grandpa. I'm sure you'll... Before I could change my sentence, Sky became dark, calls me to look up, rain began to fall and pat across the stone and grass as a haunting bell began to chime. Seriously, not trying to give you bad omens or anything, people. It's a normal occurrence, I swear. There is nothing supernatural going on here. Nothing bad will happen at all. What bothered my mind was the fact the rain was avoiding my body. It was like I was in a safe circle, underneath an invisible umbrella, so the rain couldn't soak me or my dress. What the? What's his grandfather's doing? Was it raining all of a sudden? Why was it raining all of a sudden? We were going to a wedding, not a funeral. The rain became heavy and I didn't dare move from my spot, afraid that what would happen. I looked at the grave, confused and concerned. I slouched onto the gravestones. This was an, wasn't a natural storm. Magic was at work here. My heart gave a quick squeeze and replied to my conclusion, but the word magic reverberated in my mind. Magic? I looked down and lifted my hands to scatter over my glowed my gloved palms. My fingers began to tingle, almost as if a single word unlocked something. Magic? I gently pinched the edge of my glove with my hand with two fingers and slid it off, revealing my bare skin. Nothing had changed, but I could feel that something was different. I could faintly feel energy zip through the nerves in my skin and dance in excitement at the word magic. I wonder. I knew Diana had taken away my energy and my magic before she left, but what if? What if I had some left? I raised my hand to the sky and focused the, on the back of my hand. I didn't know what I was doing, but I had to see something. My mind quickly formed a word in my mind. I didn't know where it came from, but I felt it fly through my lips as a soft whisper. The signal. As soon as the sound of that word rose into the air, the wind around me suddenly froze, as if time had stopped. The wind was slightly blowing, but the rain had stopped. I slowly lowered my hand to look around. Did I really do this? Before I could move again, the raindrops and the storm clouds began to fade away, returning to the sunny weather they had before. I looked around and noticed that the grass of Grandfather's gravestone were all dry, as if the rain hadn't even fallen in the first place. That was... I knew it! I knew it! That girl has demon magic! Hello? You're not my Grandfather Chimney Cricket! You're not invited! Go away! What the... And quit talking and let's take her! That sounds like the servant from the palace. The demon lord will be so pleased. Ah, uh, can I pass? Who? Before I could tell, 
Before I could turn to search for the voices, I felt hands grab a hold of my feet, and I looked down, lifting my dress. Two pairs of evil-looking hands had taken hold of my ankles, reaching through a dark red and purple pentagram. I shrieked, trying to pull my legs away, but couldn't stop them as they swiftly pulled me into the ground. I was pulled deeper into the darkness. I was no longer in my room. Why would you be in your room? Should I say I'm no longer in um in the graveyard? I was being dragged through a dark void, one that I couldn't escape. I reached out and clawed to the darkness, trying to find something to grab onto. I tried pulling my legs away from the hands that were holding me, but I couldn't pull free. What was going on? Why was this happening? Someone help me! Someone will kill you! As if someone had heard my screams, I suddenly felt hands let go and disappear, leaving me to float in the darkness they left me in. I shut my eyes. Please let this be a dream. Please let this be a dream! I finally felt a surface under my feet as I collapsed onto it. My body curled in on itself from the experience I had. I didn't dare turn my ways away from my lap. Not ready to get up just yet. The voice I heard however made my heart stop. You. What, what are, are you doing, doing here? here? I'm not here of my own free will. I'm so sorry to put in Diana. I do not do it on papers. I... Could you just take me home? I looked up, finding having the courage to take in my surroundings. My house stopped a beat a moment, seizing in my chest. Hi, Diane. A long time no see. How you been? You look great. Nice stripes, by the way. They totally saved you. Hi. Who are your friends? That one looks like a rabbit. Oh, this is awkward. Hi, everybody. Oh, great. I love to see five figures, strangers, monsters, beings that I didn't recognize. They all look down at me surprised. As if I had dropped in at a very bad time. Hi, sweetie. One man looked like an orc from a fantasy game. Uh, without the tusk, he had a broken horn and a very frightening aura around him as he stared at me. The other male was lank in comparison, more human-like, but I also feel a power emanating from him regardless. One of the women who was staring at me had rabbit ears. Rabbit ears? They twitched on top of her head as she looked at me and gripped her staff. She seemed harmless, yet she had animal ears? The one creature I couldn't discern the sex of seemed more excited to see me than surprised. What freaked me out about them was that they had wings sticking out from their back and they were floating. The last woman ever set off alarm bells in my head as I looked at her surprised face. Her hair, her eyes. D Diana? As she stared, the woman turned her body towards me, a recognition to the name I called her. It was her. What are you doing here? I am so sorry. I do not come here my own free will. As I said, I totally apologize. I will leave at any point if it's necessary. I am so sorry for burning in. You look great. Nice stripes. Nice purpley thingies. They suit you. I would like to go now. Diana walked towards me and stared down at me. It was odd. She didn't look like a human yet. I wasn't afraid of her demon form as she carried over. I was more in shock as to what was going on. Oh! And then no one comes out of nowhere. Before Diana could speak... Further, most likely to repeat herself, a figure quickly stepped down and bowed to her, kneeling beside me. My lady, please forgive me. I felt something moving between our worlds and assumed the Demon Lord was to blame, so I intercepted his summoning of this human. Oh, so Sam's dad was after me. Well then, does he mind? Could he, like, you know, wait till after I was married? Or, you know, do the normal thing? Come to the house? Ask politely if I would go with him, not kidnap me, but whatever. See, I told you, some demons don't have manners at all. The devils have more manners than most of these guys do. Also, Diana, you... you I like how Diana's like, mm-hmm. You did this, you brought her here, I don't like her. Yay, I'm reunited with Diana. My dream come true, not really. You. So I wasn't the only one who felt the change in the air. Diana looks strange, especially like this part here where it bumps out more with her. That's so weird. Diana stared at the man kneeling beside me as I kept my eyes up at her. As she turned her case back to me, I gulped silently. What was she going to do with me? 
This all felt wrong. I was supposed to be married. I was supposed to be living my happily ever after with the man I loved. No one was in place I didn't know. With Diana of all people and a bunch of other creatures I didn't recognise. My instincts was to... Don't give me an option here. I will kill you, main character. I can cry. I can scream. I can attack or stay still. If I attack her, she'll kill me. If I cry, I can make you somebody's... Just gonna be like, what the hell? I got four options. I normally just get one or two. I'm not prepared for this type of commitment in this visual novel. Okay. So what can we do? <sighs> On the wedding day, how would you react? Screaming might annoy her, attacking her is other questions, staying still, maybe? Crying. Why is crying an option? Because you can still have a romance around with her, meaning she's not entirely heartless, so maybe? Let's try cry. This wasn't happening. This couldn't be happening. No way. I felt tears build in my eyes as I lowered them to look at the floor in front of me, as my gaze Bow, my lungs began to seize hard, forcing me to hiccup in sadness. Uh, um, uh. Good, I threw her out of it. Good, use that against her. I couldn't help it. I began to cry profusely. Why was this happening? Why was I here? If this was another nightmare, I want to make up immediately. This wasn't right. I covered my face and cried in my hands, curling over myself as I felt sadness run through my entire body. Please let me wake up. Please. As I felt warmth suddenly through my body, I slowly stopped and felt fresh air rushing my lungs. What was happening? I recognized this warmth. I looked up to see Diana kneeling down with a very concerned look on her face, her eyes glowing a warm golden color as she stared at me. Was she enthralling me? I didn't feel aroused, but I felt usually whenever I was enthralled, but I felt calm and almost mellow. Calm down. Diana's voice seemed almost soothing, like a lullaby. However, I wasn't sleepy. I just felt quiet. The worry I had in my mind was gone. The sadness gone. Diana must have done something to make sure I wouldn't cry. I don't know whether to thank her or to be afraid. Now, can you tell me what happened? Take your time and try to remember everything. She's trying to help me. She's trying to help me. Okay, I can work with this. 